and let your name alone be glorified. Teach us tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise the name of the Lord. Please be seated. Today we are working on um, at the Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit, part one. I want us to open to the book of John chapter 14. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. We we'll take from 16 to 18. And I will pray the Father. And he will give you another helper. That he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive. Because it neither sees him. Nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. I will take it again. If you, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. Praise the name of the Lord. Many Christians are frustrated, defeated, and fruitless. Many are wallowing in spiritual poverty, unaware of the great resources of God available to them. But the wonderful truth is that every Christian has the potential to live supernaturally. The key is the God, the Holy Spirit. Is this supreme in revival, evangelism, and every Christian endeavor. Today, we shall begin to study about it. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus gave them a promise. I am going to go. The old King James Version calls him, I will send you a comforter. This new one calls it a helper. I will send you a comforter. I will not leave you as orphans. He said, the person of the Holy Spirit that I'm going to send to you will be with you and also live in you. When Jesus died at the cross, the Bible says he's just finished. The Bible said the, the, the altar, the Holy of Holies was, was split and God left the temple. And there was a promise. He said, I'm not going to live in buildings built by men. I come with a new covenant. I am going to live inside of you. So everywhere you go, you will carry me. The day we receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior, Jesus himself comes to live inside of you. Because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. So the Spirit comes to live inside of you. So what does that mean? The life you now live does not belong to you. Why? Because Jesus paid the price. So as you carry Jesus, you carry him everywhere. But the thing is that Christians are frustrated. Why? Because they forgot that they are carrying the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to use the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of Christ interchangeably because it's this one. So we become frustrated. We make decisions by our senses and by emotions. We agree to all sorts of decisions. Why? Because we forget that the person of the Holy Ghost lives inside of us. And we tend to do things by ourselves, forgotten that 
that life that you carry does not belong to you. You carry Jesus. I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going to give you a helper, a comforter. I'm going to give you a helper, a comforter that will direct you in every decision, in every path that you go. But how many of us tell the spirits that we carry? How shall I go on this journey? What dress shall I pick? What food should I cook? As minute as those things are, the spirit of Christ that you carry wants you to depend on him solely. Not on your intellect. Not on your your know-how. The spirit of Christ is there to help you. It is not there for fancy or one statue. No. But most of us forget that we carry Jesus everywhere we go. And sometimes we easily get afraid. And you quickly forget that the scripture says the person that is in you is greater. Than that which that is in the world. When your boss threatens you, you begin to shiver. Why? Because all that you think that at the end of the day I'm going to get my salary. So if he tells you to do this, you tend to. Uh, we need to use wisdom here. We just need to use wisdom. So let me. Let me use the diplomacy. Diplomacy is half lie, half truth. Why are we studying about the Holy Spirit? The scripture calls it helper. It calls it comforter. Do you depend on him for help at all times? Do you depend on him for instructions at all times? Do you depend on him for help? It calls him the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive. Because it neither sees him. Nor knows him. One can come to church. But when a man does not know him. You cannot have him. He said he's a spirit of truth. It teaches you the truth. Jesus is the way. Is the what? Is the truth and the life. It teaches you the truth. There's no lie in him. He's not an accuser of brethren. The spirit of Christ does not accuse. The book of Jude says something. The Bible said, Angel Michael went for the body of Moses and the devil came to contend with him. The angel did not tell the devil, Come, you are so so and so. Your place is in the pit of hell. No. But the angels told him, The Lord rebuke you. Why? Because the angel cannot accuse. Are you an accuser? The man who carries the spirit of Christ does not accuse. The man who carries the spirit of Christ tells the truth. He stands on the truth. He lives his life according to the truth. You can come to church. But the Bible says you cannot know him. 
Because you have not seen him, you cannot know him and you cannot have him. You can be rich. You can be a billionaire. You can come to church. You can give money. You can pay a very big fight. But if you don't know him, he cannot live inside of you. He cannot. He's the only one that can help you. He's the only one that can make you become like Jesus. But the truth is, do we really depend on him as our helper? Do we depend on him to navigate our path in life? Do you tell him what you want to do? Lord, I present it to you. Is it of you? The spirit of Christ is there to direct each and every one of us. But do we depend on him? Do we depend on him? Do we depend on him? And he said, I will not leave you as orphans. Tonight, in the situation that we find ourselves, sometimes we forget there is God. Situation can be very overwhelming. Challenges of life confront us. And we easily forget there is God. He said, I will not leave you as orphans. Orphans don't have fathers, don't have mothers. Some have mothers. I will not leave you as orphans. I am your source. I am your father. I will be able to tell you that this way you're going. There is danger on that way. I read something in a good news version. Media, do you have a good news version? Good news. Media, are you there? No. Okay, praise God. Now, the good, is it, do you have any, have any good news here? Do you have any good news Bible? Any good news Bible? Okay, there's no. Now, Psalm 127 said something. In one of the verses, in the Good News Translation, he said, while you yet asleep, he said he has provided everything that you need. Why you yet asleep? Everything that you need, he has provided it. And that's why he said, I cannot leave you as orphans. In this time and season, do you believe what he has said is real? He said, while you are sleeping, I have provided all that you need for the day. Brethren, everyone who has come to Jesus, Carries him inside. You are not permitted. To be frustrated. Even when he comes at you. With all the situations. You carry a life. That is more than the cost of living. You carry a life. That is Christ. You carry a life. That is able to provide for his own. And the Lord is bringing to us this evening. Can you depend on this helper? For instructions. For directions. And for decision making. Can you trust him? To become like him. Can you trust him? To yield to him. Can you trust him? There's a book I read. I dare to call him Jesus. It was written by, was it? A Pakistani woman. We were all high up there. Their family was known in Pakistan. And she was comparing the Quran and the Bible. 
And suddenly she saw somewhere in the scripture. And the Lord confronted her. And she wanted to know more. She ran to a pastor. But the pastor was not at home. But they met the wife. And the wife spoke to her. And do you know what? As she opens the scriptures. She gave her life to Christ. In her house. Not led by anybody. But by the spirit of God. She began to study scriptures. And the spirit of God was teaching her. And her people rose against her. And they wanted to kill her. How can this woman be a Christian? Every time. The spirit tells her something. And she disobeys it. He said the spirit will keep, will keep silent. And she will not be comfortable. And she will say Lord I am sorry. And the, and the spirit will begin to speak to her. But there is something that caught me. So there was threats that was coming. Threats that was coming. I am saying this story because I am going somewhere. So there was so much threat on her life. So the pastors who were close to her came over to the house. It's a big house. No bug light proof. So the pastors told her, do you know what? You need to put bug light proofs on your doors and your windows so that you can be secured. So the pastors prayed with her and they left. Immediately as the pastors left, he said, he heard the spirit tell her. He said, don't do that. I'm your security. Don't put any burglary proof. Don't put any mechanism for protection. He said, I am your security. God told her, don't do it. And do you know what? She didn't put any burglary proof. No security gadget, nothing. She stayed in Pakistan until she left for America. No, but none of them came to attack her. But they wanted to attack her. Brethren, why did I say this? Why did I give this story? Most of the times we tend to, um, Most of the time we tend to hold to, on to men's counsel. But we tend to forget to ask the Lord, what shall I do? But we quickly run to men to get counsel. But we forget that we carry the Holy Spirit inside of us. You carry him everywhere you go. In the toilet, he's there with you. Jesus said, pray always. How do you pray always? Is to talk with him. Lord, I want to wear this shoe. Is this shoe okay for me to wear? You are talking to him. You are praying. So we can easily run for advice, but we easily forget that we carry the Holy Ghost. And brethren, the spirit of Christ is called the helper. Can you decide tonight? And know this. That you carry the Lord everywhere. And the Lord is making you to become like him. As you carry this Lord. The Lord wants you to depend on him. Not on any man. Not on any person. But depend on him. We make decisions. But we don't tell him. We write agreement. And we sign the agreement. Without telling him. So you keep him at the background. 
and you say you have given your life to Christ. <laughs> you have not. You have not understood what it means to hand over your life. There's an exchange of life. There's no change. It's an exchange. He takes your own and he gives you his own. It's not a change of life. It's an exchange of life. It simply means that the life you now live does not belong to you. But it belongs to him. Another comforter implies there was an original comforter. The original comforter was Jesus Christ. He was the consolation of Israel. He was the day star. The son of righteousness. Bringing light into darkness and shadows of death. He brought comfort to wherever he went. Whether at the rich Jairus house, the widow of May, or on the road to the cemetery of the poor beggar by the wayside. Those who came to him went home comforted. Be it a leopard, a penniless woman pleading to death, or a dog with a demon possessed daughter. Now, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. No wonder he is, he is another comforter of the same time. Not different in any way. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 19. Can we open to Second Peter chapter 1 verse 19? Second Peter chapter 1 verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Where unto ye do well that ye may heed as unto a light that shineth in the dark place until day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. He's referring to the master as the day star. It refers him as the day star. You carry the day star. You carry the day star. John chapter 1, verse 1. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the world, and the world was with God, and the world was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of man. In him was light. And the life was the light of man. You carry the life of Christ. And you give light to man. That life is a light unto man. So when men see you, they don't see, they don't see Charles. They see Jesus. They should not see you, they should see Jesus. In him was life. And that life Tonight, there's a reason why God is bringing this teaching to each and every one of us. Who are you relying on? Are you relying on your flesh? Or are you relying on God? When Moses gave the laws, God gave the laws so that they can break it. Because no man can keep the law. So he gave it to them. He kept breaking it. What was God telling them? So they saw that they are they have the they they are they have the how will I put it? That they, they have the uh, inability to live a righteous life. They 
They have the inability to live a righteous life. They kept breaking the laws. They kept breaking the laws. And Jesus came. He said, you don't need to do it. You don't need to work it out. I have paid the debt. Why are you trying to pay a debt that has been paid? Why are you trying to do what God has done, has concluded? And Jesus said, it is finished. Why are you trying to do it? When the Lord is saying, why don't you just believe? The problem is believing. We try to work it out. We try to do it. We try to do it so that we can be righteous. You cannot be righteous by doing. It's by believing. It's by believing. Because you cannot see him. Doesn't mean that he does not exist. It doesn't mean that you don't see him. That he does not live inside of you. Those of you who are born again. You must accept the fact. There was an exchange. He gave you his life. And he took yours. He said you are a new creature. All things are passed away. All things have become new. You carry a life. The life. That is the spirit of God. Why don't you lean on that life? The person of the Holy Ghost. Why don't you lean on him for everything? Why don't you ask him for direction? Why am I going through this matter? Lord, why am I going through this matter? I need that to know. 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 He's not referring us to anybody. Every one of us that is that is in Christ have access to him. I don't need a medium. I don't need a medium. I don't need an a go between. I have access to him. I carry him. Everywhere I go, I carry him. He reminds me. You know, most of the times you set your clocks. Your clock will be ringing. You by yourself will stop it. And you keep sleeping. You will stop it unknown to you. And you sleep. You keep on sleeping. But I want you to know. Those of us who have tried it before. I have tried this several times. Lord, I want to wake up. So, so and so time. Regen. 30 minutes or even one hour before that time. You will see yourself waking up. How come? Because you depended on him to wake you up. You can depend on him for that exam. You can depend on him for that job. No matter how difficult the assignment they have given to you in that office. That the Holy Spirit cannot help you. He will help you. But are you ready to rely on him? Are we ready to rely on him? He reminds us. He teaches us. He encourages us. He comforts us. When all friends have forsaken you, the Spirit of God is there with you. He comforts you. When men have rejected you, he's there. He comforts you. When men have looked down on you, he's there to comfort you. Regen, he speaks. He talks. The Holy Spirit speaks and he talks. 
He wants a relationship. How could he give up his son? He wants a relationship. And that is why he said, I prefer to live in you. So that I don't need to, you don't need to run to church to pray. Or whenever there's an issue, I need to run to church so that I can pray. Hey! Where you are, you carry him. You tell him, Lord, this is where I am, oh. I cannot sort it out. It's not about shouting. It's not about making noise. It's about talking to him. You don't need to shout to talk to him. Because he lives inside of you. You need to know it. You carry him everywhere you go. In that toilet. Talk to him. Talk with him. Talk to him. He talks. He speaks. He gives directions. He tells you, no, don't go this way. But go this way. I don't like the clothes you're wearing. Change it. Change it. Change it. Change it. But then you can't imagine what the Spirit of God does to a man. It helps him avoid all sorts of troubles. Helps him avoid all sorts of mistakes. Things I regret in life today is because I didn't yield to him when I needed to yield on him, to him. So I made my decisions by myself. But I've accepted Christ, but I made my decisions by myself. I suffer for it. He said, I will not leave you as orphans. Brother, could you, could you absorb that word? I am your source. I am your father. I am everything to you. Praise the name of the Lord. Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4. 4 and 6. Colossians chapter 4, 4 and 6. That I may that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. 6. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Redeeming the time. Walk in wisdom. Let your speech Okay, leave the five. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Redeeming the time. There's a wisdom of the world. There's a wisdom of God. And he says, no, stay with five. Five, please. Five. Thank you. He said, walk in wisdom toward them that are without. There's a wisdom that the Holy Ghost gives to you. And brethren, they will say, how did you come about it? How did you do it? They will be wondering, how did you do it? Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. There are people who don't have it. They don't know it. He said, walk in wisdom. The wisdom of God. The Holy Spirit can only reveal to you the wisdom of God. And brethren, you are better off. You are better off with the wisdom. And it's only the Spirit that you carry that can give you the wisdom. The pastor who came here, the publisher pastor who came here during the, um, the program that we had, and he said something. After auditing a bank, and he brought the checks, and he came into the head office, and he gave it to them, and they carelessly dropped it. 
and they moved to another facility. And the, the judge is now asking for the checks. He went to the office. He didn't photocopy it. There was no signature. And there's no way. He went to them. They told him, you didn't give to us. Why? Because there's no exchange of anything. There's no written document. There's nothing. So they, they, they denied him. But the men can deny when Bush comes to shop. They will deny you. They will leave you. And he said, he said, he, and they said, if you don't have the check, you will come to present yourself to the judge. He said he was troubled. Where will he see the checks? They have moved facility. They have changed the building. So they have moved all sorts of things. Where will you see checks? Checks. Where are you going to see it? He said he went to God. He went to God. He said, Lord, it is you and you alone. It is only you that can deliver me from this mess that I found myself. I messed up. I didn't write. I didn't photocopy it. I didn't make them to sign. I messed up. He might not he didn't say this. He didn't say this, but <laughs> that is what I would say. But you know what? He said the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit told him where those checks were. He said where God told him those checks were, were unbelievable. And he's not ready to tell the people that he's coming to get the checks there. God told him where the checks were. And brethren, he went to that place and he saw the checks. He did photocopy, he signed, and he gave them everything. Brethren, that is what the Spirit of God is waiting for you to activate. He will be inside there. He will not talk. He will not say what to you. Because you are depending on yourself for everything. He will not say anything. He will allow you to do whatever you want to do. Because you do not bring him in. You do not ask for his help. You do not ask for anything. He will stay there. So what is the difference between you as a Christian and those in the world? The world cannot have him. Because they don't know him. So why don't you use the life, the person of the Holy Ghost, to run your life, your journey on earth? Why popping into all pots of holes, pots, all sorts of pots of holes? Why run into problems? Why run into all sorts of mistakes when the Holy Spirit can direct you and help you? Enough of depending on yourself. Enough of depending on yourself. If only we can depend on the Holy Spirit. If only we can depend on the Holy Spirit. Brethren, your Christian work will be far better than what it is now. It will be far better than what it is now. I don't need to send my children to school because I don't need to send them to school where because this is a happening school. This is where everything is. Because I need to, I need to, I need to get acceptance. Huh? Lord, which school should my children go to? The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. There's a father. The daughter got an admission. And the Lord told him, the father, that your daughter will school abroad. He said, the Lord told him, I will keep him. I will keep her. 
And the man released her daughter to go. And the Lord kept her. Can you talk to the Lord? He desires a relationship. It is not, he is not a tax master. He is not seeking a master uh -uh, or a servant relation. He is seeking a relationship. A father and a son. A son does not know what the, ma what the master wants to do. A servant does not know what the master intends to do. He said, he that knows what the spirit of God is the one who carries the spirit of Christ. He said, I have the mind of Christ. The only person that knows what the man carries is the spirit that he carries. If you want to know the mind of God, you just need to have a spirit inside of you. You will know the mind of God. Why? Paul said, I have the mind of Christ. So everything, the revelation comes to those who have spirits. He can only reveal himself to them that carry him. That carry his spirit inside of him. He said, I have the mind of Christ. But then, let us know that we have the mind of Christ. Let us know that we carry the Holy Ghost. And he's able to do anything. The Bible said, with man, it is impossible. But with God, it is very, very possible. Can we depend on the master? The Holy Spirit is also an instructor, a teacher, a monitor, and an advocate. The word translate comforter also means instructor, teacher, a monitor, and an advocate. Jesus was the teacher, the instructor. They called him rabbi. But those who had revelation knowledge knew him as rabboni. The instructor of rabbis. No wonder he promised not another pope or archbishop, but another teacher, an instructor in the mysteries of God, revealing the deep meanings of the word of God. With him to instruct you, you do not need the enticing words of human wisdom. A monitor is a sort of overseer watching over you, leading you, guiding you, assisting you when need be. So is the Holy Spirit. An advocate pleads for and against a person. The Holy Spirit pleads against a dead conscience, convicting a sinner of his sins, but pleads for the saints. With a groaning that cannot be altered. He is a loving comforter. Faithful. Wise and true. Surely you need him now. You need him now. Romans chapter 8 verse 26. Romans chapter 8 verse 26. Likewise. The Spirit also help our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh a succession for us with groanings which cannot be altered. That is what the Spirit of God does. Sometimes you don't even know what to pray. But it helps us in our infirmities. Infirmities. It helps us in our infirmities, in our pains. It helps us.
Can we rely on the Spirit? He's our teacher. I don't understand what I'm reading. Why don't you tell who you carry? Lord, teach me what I'm reading. Teach me what I'm reading. Teach me what I'm reading. Philip asked the man, do you know what you are reading? The man said, I don't know. Unless I have somebody that will explain it for me. The Spirit of God teaches you how to evangelize. It tells you the timing. It gives you a time and it gives you an opportunity. It does it by himself. But do you know what? Probably you are traveling with the boss. And everybody is discussing politics and Boko Haram and the kidnappings. You cannot shout hallelujah to look at you. They will not look at you and say, oh God, no, they stop us. People don't come again. Because they are engrossed in it. You will just wait. He said, Lord, I need to tell these people something. I need, I need to, I need to minister. I need to tell them about you. And suddenly, the driver suddenly slept off a little bit and found himself heading into the bush and suddenly woke up and found out that he was heading into the bush and everybody was shouting. He quickly came back to the road and everybody said, Ah, praise God, hallelujah. Everybody will be quiet because to them, they would have lost their life. Everybody is quiet. Why? Because you have told the Holy Spirit, Lord, I need an opportunity to tell these people the truth. And that it happened. There was an opportunity, but there was no time. Because everybody is talking about politics. Everybody is talking about what is happening in the country. Nobody wants to hear Jesus. But Jesus is our help in this time. And everybody, everybody will be coming that bus because they nearly lost their lives. And suddenly you say, if that accident would have happened, who would have gone to heaven? Everybody will be staring at you. Some, their head will drop. Do you know why? Because they know inside their hearts that they would have made heaven. And you began to tell them about Jesus. Everybody will hear. Everybody will want to listen to you. Why? Because the Spirit of God can do it. There's an opportunity. And he said, Lord, I need the right timing to tell these people about Jesus. If there's nothing you have gotten tonight, I want you to know there's an exchange of life. He took yours and he gave you his. And he says, I don't longer live in houses built by men. I have a new covenant. You will carry me everywhere you go. And Jesus said, I will leave you as orphans. I'm going to send a comforter. I'm going to send a helper. You will carry him. Everywhere you go, you carry him. But you need to remember and you need to know it that you are carrying him. Because when you carry him, you won't go to the motel to sleep with him. Because you carry him, you won't go into fraudulent activities. Why? Because you carry him. Because you carry him, the life that you carry will not allow you to tell lie. 
because you carry him. Everything that you do, the life you now live, it does not belong to you. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, we'll round up with that. Can we read it? Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I will take it again. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. You are worthless. There's no value. And Jesus exchanged that life. He crucified it. And says you are dead. I say I give you a life. The person of the Holy Ghost. And Paul said the life and I live. He said it's not I. But him. Why don't you just surrender? Why don't you just surrender to him? Why don't you just surrender to him? Lord, run my life. I won't be on the driver's seat again. I want you to run my life. The life I now have, it does not belong to me. Why don't you just depend on the Holy Ghost to lead you, to help you, to sort out issues for you? Depend on Him, not your, your senses or emotions. Don't depend on your feelings because feelings are the voice or the voices of the flesh. The, the flesh speaks and it speaks by the by feelings. Don't depend on that feelings. Let's depend on him. Let's depend on him. We are believers. I don't need to see to believe. I just believe because he has told me to believe. I'm the righteousness of, of God in Christ Jesus. There's no longer no condemnation for them who are in Christ Jesus. Who do not walk in the flesh but by the Spirit. You carry the Holy Ghost. Let's walk in that. Praise the name of the Lord. Do you have any questions before we pray? Do you have any questions before we pray? Do you have any questions? The spirit is real. You carry him. You carry him. It is not a lie. The scripture said it. You carry him. In him. He said the world does not know him. But you who know him, you carry him. He lives in you. I will not leave you as orphans. Let us bow down our heads and begin to talk to the Lord. I don't know where God has spoken to you. But I want you to go to God in the place of prayer. I want you to tell him, Lord, tonight I want to completely surrender to you. Lord, help me to submit myself to the Holy Ghost. It is no longer I, but him. Lord, it is no longer I but him. May I not take decisions without consulting him. 
May I not live this life by myself without allowing him to run my life. Tonight, I repent. Tonight, I ask for your mercy tonight. Lord, I ask, I yield myself completely to the leading of the Holy Ghost. You have revealed to me that you live inside of me. I should know it that you live inside of me. Everywhere I go, I carry you. Why am I entering all sorts of mistakes and troubles? Why am I making wrong decisions in life? Because I have not yielded to you. I have listened to the voice of men. I have listened to the voice of the flesh. I have been with my feelings and emotions. But I have not yielded to you when you speak and when you instruct. Tonight, Lord, I yield to you completely. If it is what I will do tonight, where I am as a Christian, I am still struggling because I am still wanting to do it by my power, by my strength. By strength shall no man prevail. Tonight, I come, I come, I come, I come, I yield to you, Lord. It's no longer I. Help me to yield to you completely. You have revealed to us the benefits of carrying you everywhere we go. Fear has been driven out because I carry Jesus. I'm no longer afraid because I carry him. I carry the Holy Ghost. Why? Because the Spirit of God directs me into all truths. Is a spirit of truth. It teach, teaches me the truth. Even when men are lying, God tells me the way I should go. Please talk to him tonight. Lord, I need you. Help me to submit completely to the work of the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit of God, help me to submit to you and you alone. Monitor my life. Teach me by yourself. Instruct me. Talk to the Lord the same. Lord, help me to hear you as you speak. Lord, help me to hear you when you speak. Lord, remove every deafness of, of heart. Every dullness of understanding. Take it away. Every dullness of understanding, take it away. Lord, help my heart. Let the light of God pierce every part of my heart. I carry him who is the life and the light of man. Lord, help us tonight. Really, we cannot help ourselves, but we depend on you tonight. Help each and every one of us. Lord, we want to thank you tonight. Holy Spirit of God, we have come. You have spoken to our hearts. Lord, just like you have encountered each and every one of us, help us to rely on you. May we always know that we carry you. May we always know that we carry you. Thank you, Father. May we rely on you for everything. May we not do things by ourselves again, but help us to rely on you and you alone. Thank you, my Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can we pass the baskets? Can we pass the baskets?